Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today I would like to revisit the subject of taking an RMS measurement of a square wave using multimeters like this. In a couple of previous videos where I have been looking closer at those multimeters I was taking some measurements of a square wave out of a signal generator to my disappointment, the readings on the multimeter were not what I was expecting. In the comments under the video, some of you have left explanations of why was I seeing the readings that I had during those measurements. Then I realized that the concept of RMS measurement that I had in my head was not entirely right. You see, RMS, or root mean square, is also referred to as the heating value, equal to a DC value of voltage or current that would cause the same heating effect in a resistive element. So, silly me, I thought that with a RMS multimeter I would be able to stick the probes on two points in a circuit and measure the RMS value or equivalent heating value between those two points of a voltage or, or current that's flowing through a conductor and that will be it. But those were not the measurements I was getting and thanks to the comments left under the videos it made me realize why, so thank you for that. So in this video I want to share what I've understood and what the concept of the RMS measurement is and how that applies specifically to a square waveform. What I have prepared is a similar setup as to what it was in the previous videos. So we have both of the two RMS multimeters, the Aneng AN8002 and Unity UT61E, connected side by side, they're just daisy chained and they are connected to the signal generator and to the own oscilloscope. The signal generator is set to 500 Hz and square wave at 50% duty cycle at the moment and I've also prepared the representation of three waveforms that we will be looking at today so there will be a 50%, 75 and 25% duty cycle square wave and we'll take some measurements with both of those multimeters and we'll see whether the readings will be true or not. The 500 Hz frequency that we will be doing this test at is really not important, it could be a little bit more, a little bit less really wouldn't make a difference. The only important thing is is that the frequency is within the bandwidth limit of both of the multimeters, which it is in this case. Here is the first waveform that we will be looking at and here it is on the oscilloscope and as you can see the waveform itself is spending the same amount of time above the zero line as the same amount of time below the zero line and this is a 50% square wave and the amplitude of the signal is as you can see 10 volts. We have gone through this before and we know that in a case of a symmetrical square wave like this one the RMS value of this square wave is equal to half of the amplitude and that should be what we get when we take the RMS measurement. However, where I have gone wrong previously is assuming that two waveforms underneath here, so where the duty cycle is other than 50%, that those are pure AC waveforms, because they are not. It is not obvious at first glance. However, the concept of pure AC signal is such that the average value of an AC signal must be equal to zero. In case of a 50% square wave, not a problem, this actually averages out to zero. The average of that value over a period of time will be equal to zero. However, when we change the duty cycle, it's no longer the case. The signal spends three times as much on the positive part, on the five volts, as it does on the negative side, so minus five volts. That means that both of those square wave signals are no longer pure AC waveforms. Those have a DC component to it. And the DC component in both cases, here and here, is what's left when you take out the pure AC waveform. So let's take a few measurements in all those three cases and then we have a look if we get the right values. So first we're looking at the 50%, this is the first case, both multimeters are set to AC through RMS, so Unity is showing 5.04 volts, Aneng showing 4.82. Now let's check what the DC measurement will be in both cases. In both cases we've got 0.03 of a volt, so almost nothing. Let's change the waveform. Let's go up to 75%. So there we go. That's the exact same waveform as here. 75% duty cycle, same frequency. And let's go back to AC RMS. Unity is showing 4.34 and Aneng 
4.11 so aneng is showing a little bit less than the unity in both cases or unity is showing a little bit higher than aneng whatever is the case now this is quite a bit off before ac was showing close enough to 5 volts which would be the correct value but now it's you know almost a volt off of what it should be do remember the rms value of this waveform is still 5 volts so let's check what it's showing on dc 2.53 volts in both cases and let's move to 25 percent value 25 percent duty cycle there you go 25 percent so unity is showing 4.38 and aneng 4.11 and then if we flip it over to dc unity is showing 2.47 and 2.47 on aneng as well so here is what we have 50 percent 75 and 25 percent those values were negative at the on the last measurement i just forgot to put a minus i've just added it on now so as it turns out a square wave can have a dc component to it if it's not a 50 percent like this symmetrical 50 percent waveform in this case we've measured rms those all are rms measurements and we've measured 5.04 and 4.82 that's i guess within a margin of error of what, what meters can have on such a low amplitude signal and the dc values were in both cases close to nothing but as we moved on to different duty cycles 75 and 25 percent the dc value in both cases was just about two and a half volts the only difference is it was two and a half volts and minus two and a half volts over here same with the ac measurement the rms measurement of both signals 75 and 25 percent were just about the same really so why is that that's quite interesting if you think about it, it actually makes sense because this and this signal, they look just the same really, but flipped over. So those readings, it makes sense that they are so similar. Just in case of the DC value, it will just go negative. It flips over. The DC component was either positive here or negative here. Here is a page from Wikipedia. And yeah, if it's on Wikipedia, it must be true. A special case of RMS waveform combination where RMS DC refers to the direct current or voltage for that matter component of the signal and rms ac is the alternating current component of the signal or current or voltage to get the total rms value of the signal we need to take a square root out of sum of squares of both the measurements so let's do that and see what we get in case of a 50 percent square wave because the dc value is so small and then if you square it it becomes even smaller the rms total value is pretty much exactly the same as the AC measurement of the RMS and that's why in case of a 50% square wave we were getting the correct value. So let's see the 75% waveform because on the RMS AC measurement we were showing quite a bit off. It was 0.7 and 0.9 of a volt in case of Anung and square root there we go we are getting the RMS value of 5.02 volts and that is correct let's check aneng 4.82 so it's consistent with its previous measurements so let's check the last one the 25 percent duty cycle minus over here doesn't matter because when you square it negative value disappears so it's just an absolute value we square root 5.03 4.79 so it turns out that both of those multimeters measure correctly the rms value in all the cases with the 50 percent 25 or 75 you name it any type of square wave it measures the correct rms value but we need to add the dc component once we add the dc component using the square root of sum of squares we are left with the total rms value in both cases or in all three cases five volts in the ballpark of five volts there are some inaccuracies in the meters nonetheless this is correct it's within the ballpark of what it should be so this was my first rms true rms multimeter that i ever had uh, because it was inexpensive before i never got one because they tend to be quite expensive quite costly to buy when i got it and i took some measurements on a square wave like this I didn't get the readings I was expecting and I put it down to this meter not being 
really true RMS. What I didn't know at that time, this is a true RMS AC multimeter and there is something called a true RMS AC plus DC multimeter which does this addition and conversion at the end for us. So those multimeters I would be able to do what I wanted to do but with a meter like this there is a little bit of math involved and basically need to take two measurements to get the total value of RMS or total heating value of a signal that you're trying to measure. I also gave this meter a false RMS badge when I got it I was so upset with it but I guess it's fair to say that we can take that off now. There we go, it's a true RMS multimeter, sorry Anning. I've learned something new and I understand this a little bit better now. So that's all there is to it. And I hope you learned something new from this video. If you had a slight misconception of the RMS measurement like I did before. For this video, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for joining me and sticking around. And for now, take care.